Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, the NumPy stack in Python. In this lecture, I want to give you a small taste for what other types of machine learning exist and some future topics you can look forward to learning about. I want you to realize that this section was very limited by necessity. The only purpose of this section was to really get you thinking geometrically. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this section, it's that I want you to think of machine learning as a geometry problem, as well as the two or three lines of code required to solve this problem. Now it took some time to get to this point, even for just these basics, so I hope you understand and appreciate the depth that you'll have to go to to get to these future topics. So for this section, we looked at both classification and regression. For both these problems, we're given some training data in the form of inputs x and targets y. In machine learning terminology, this is called supervised learning because you're told the correct answer and you can correct your guess based on the true target. But you can imagine that getting targets is a time-consuming and expensive process. Consider the ImageNet dataset. This is a dataset of over 10 million images. This is today's benchmark for image classification. Now imagine having to go through every image and label it properly. So for example, if the image is a cat, you have to label it cat. If the image is of a dog, you have to label it dog. But it's not just cats and dogs you have to label. In fact, ImageNet has 1,000 different classes. So this is extremely time consuming and you definitely can't do this by yourself. Maybe you can pay someone to do it for you, but now it costs money. So imagine if you're a startup and you need to label 10 million training samples. Is that always going to be feasible? The answer is no. So this is where unsupervised learning comes into play. Unsupervised learning means we have an X, but we don't have a Y. In other words, we have a bunch of images or a bunch of emails, but no labels for them. Can we still learn something from this data? The answer is yes. One example of this is clustering. So we might collect data from a bunch of news articles, but it's too time consuming for us to actually read through them all manually. Well, we can apply clustering and look to see what patterns we find. We may find that one cluster contains a lot of articles about technology, and another cluster contains a lot of articles about politics. So it allows us to group together similar items without needing to label them by hand, which as we discussed, saves both time and money. The third type of machine learning I want to talk about is reinforcement learning. Here's where things get really tricky. First, let me tell you about some applications. Reinforcement learning has been used to produce some tremendous results in the recent past. Some examples are AlphaGo, which beat the world champion in the game of Go. This is despite the fact that many experts didn't think this would be possible for another 10 years. Then, a few years after that, we got AlphaZero, which is an even bigger improvement over AlphaGo. One big difference between AlphaGo and AlphaZero is that AlphaGo required knowledge about human strategies, whereas AlphaZero learned to play Go totally on its own by playing against itself. Another important application of reinforcement learning is playing video games. These algorithms have demonstrated superhuman abilities at Atari games and more recently Dota 2, which you may have heard of if you are a gamer. Video games are important because they simulate physics. So if an algorithm is capable of learning simulated physics, then it's reasonable to assume that the same algorithm can learn real-world physics. And in fact, we have some examples of RL algorithms that can learn to walk, run, jump, and navigate. But as I said earlier, reinforcement learning is tricky. It's a whole different beast than supervised and unsupervised learning. So in my opinion, if you want to tackle RL, it's good to get a solid grounding in both supervised and unsupervised learning first. Finally, there are a ton of practical concepts that we haven't talked about in this course. We touched on train and test sets and why it's always the test set that you actually care about. This is definitely a topic we're going to study more in depth. 
Some concepts related to this are generalization, the bias variance trade-off, and cross-validation. Another important topic is hyperparameters. So if you look at the documentation for random forest classifier or MLP classifier, you'll notice that they actually come with tons of options, although we didn't use them. What are these options? And what are good values and what are not good values? How should we choose them? So one example is that for a random forest, we know that it's made up of a bunch of decision trees. The question is, how many decision trees should we actually use? To answer these questions, you first have to learn about the underlying algorithms. But there are other, more general techniques you could use as well. So that's something we'll be talking about in the future.